All right, have everyone, can you hear me correctly? Yes. Yes, okay, so thanks Ashish for uh, the introduction and thanks uh, CNC uh, uh, Meetup to having me tonight. I'm super excited to be here with you tonight and let's go with a flat car container Linux and how you can contribute to it. So before going further, let's just, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I recently joined Kinvolk as a Linux OS software engineer. And before that, I was uh, working in a company doing DevOps stuff. So I'm used to work with cloud providers and infrastructure, and uh, of course, container workloads. Uh, some personal thing, I like to work on Gen2 Linux. Uh, this is my main OS. And uh, this is my professional OS too. And I like to, to boring my friends about uh, how nice uh, Gen2 is and everything you can do with uh, this distribution. It has uh, quite uh, its importance for, uh, for this talk. And uh, second, uh, uh, this is my first talk in English. Uh, it's not my first talk, but my first in English. So please forgive uh, any mistakes, uh, English mistake I will do uh, during this talk. All right. Flatcar Container Linux, what is it? Uh, I won't deep dive inside the technical stuff of Flatcar Container Linux because we already provided a bunch of talk about uh, what is Flatcar Container Linux, how does it work, and how to deploy it. Basically, you can deploy it using CloudFormation if you want to. Uh, it's an OS, so it's just a Linux OS designed to run container workloads. What does it mean? It means you can run uh, Docker containers, you can run a Kubernetes cluster, everything uh, requiring container to work. So it's designed to run uh, this kind of workload with, uh, because we provide every tools we need to run container. Uh, we ship everything inside uh, the OS. Flatcar is also a secure OS. So just for you to know, Flatcar is based on Gen2 Linux. So you understand why I love Gen2 Linux and now why I like to work on Flatcar. So it's based on Gen2 Linux, uh, which means it will uh, get all the mechanism of Gen2 Linux uh, inside. Um, let's give an example. With Gen2, everything you install will be compiled. With over Linux distribution, you just pre, uh, you just pull pre-built binaries when you install a software. With Gen2, you pull the source code, then you compile on your own machine the source code. And using this particularity, we are able with Gen2 Linux to tweak and to have a granular control on what we install. Um, let's suppose I want to install Chromium on my main OS, so the classical browser. I want to start Chromium, but I know that I won't need to print stuff uh, with Chromium. So I don't need the CAPS uh, protocol to, to run Chromium, so I can easily disable it using a compiling flag. With Gen2, it's exactly the same thing. You can, for each package you install, enable or disable some features to provide uh, really the strictness, the bare minimum you need to run uh, your, pack, your software. So like this, we can provide a secure rest because we have a minimal surface attack because for each software we install, we just provide the bare minimum to run and to securely run. And de facto, it's a lightweight operating system because we just embed the strict, uh, the minimum we need to run the OS. To compare Flatcar, uh, you can just think about other OS doing quite the same thing. So running container workloads. So you have Talos, you have uh, K3 OS. So all these kind of OS are on the same purpose. It's to run container workloads. So now why contributing to Flatcar? By extension, we could ask the question, why contributing to uh, open source software? Um, because first, it's fun. It's always fun to contribute to something open source because you will be involved inside the community. So you can be involved in meetups, in conferences. Uh, you get you you be get in touch with all other people, sharing the same uh, love as you as the open source world. And it's also a good way to learn new things because uh, when you work on something at work, uh, it's 
not always, but most of the time, it's the same topic, uh, it's the same technologies, the same tools. And by contributing to open source software, you can see something different. And it's always cool to see something different, uh, especially in IT, where there is a lot of things to see in IT. Uh, it's super cool to see uh, over stuff. And finally, to work on something you really want to, uh, because you won't get uh, the feeling to work because you do something you like to do. And Flatcar has something more than over open source of, uh, software. It's that it's an OS. So you get a full knowledge of what is developing an OS. And you'll get all the knowledge uh, to run um, something like a file system, network consideration, uh, boot engine, every stuff, every piece of an OS, you will uh, dive inside and understand how it works uh, in the runtime. So this is why you should contribute to Flatcar uh, Container Linux. And now, uh, if I convince you and you want to contribute to Flatcar, um, how can you do uh, to, to do that? First, we have a Git repository. So it's the main entry point of everything. It's the kinvolk slash Flatcar or kinvolk slash contribution. Uh, everything leads to the same place. And in this Git repository, you will find everything you need to contribute. So documentation, code of conduct, uh, requirements, how does it work? And also you get access to the issue tracker of uh, Git. So on Kinvolk slash Flatcar, you have every issue for every Flatcar project. Uh, so it's pretty cool because it's all in the same place. And finally, uh, you can contribute, uh, first of all, with communication. It's always important to communicate on open source software. So we have a dedicated uh, matrix uh, channel and uh, ERC channel. Uh, it's a flat curve channel. So this is everything you need to getting started by contributing to flat curve container Linux what kind of contribution we, we expect. So at the moment, it's only update and upgrade of uh, packages or provide new packages, but uh, we, can also, we also expect to have a documentation, of course, because our documentation is not yet uh, perfect. So it's always cool to fix typos and to, to rewrite, rewrite something. Uh, and also, it, it's, to me, it's the best thing to, to start uh, in uh, open source is to contribute to documentation. So this is the main guideline to what to cont contribute to Flatcar. Um, now let's see how to contribute in a technical uh, part. So let's take a, a simple example. Uh, as a member of the community, I want to provide a new package uh, to Flatcar Container Linux. So we will see and we break apart every step of this, uh, of this contribution. But before going further, we just need to take a, a, few, a few moments to define some Gen2 uh, vocabulary, which are essentials to continue uh, this talk. So let's define an eBuild. eBuild is just a file, actually. It's a file extension. It's a bash file. And inside, we, it's like a recipe, like we seen earlier. Uh, you will define how you install your package. As I said, with Gen2, everything is compiled. So we need to, to say, how are you going to compile this software? We can have C software, C++ software, Python, Node.js. So if I don't need to compile, I need to install it. So in this file, we just describe how you will, uh, how you will install this package to uh, the OS. We have also the overlay. Overlay, it's basically where you store the eBuild. It's kind of APT repository, really uh, in quotes. Uh, and it can be a Git directory, HTTP server. Uh, it can even be a local directory. This is where you store all your eBuild. And finally, with Gen2, you have eMerge. eMerge is the package manager. This is, uh, this is the, the tool you will use to uh, install your software, upgrade your softwares, but also remove software. And uh, in Gen2 vocabulary, we, we talk about emerge something, to emerge something. So to just uh, summarize, with emerge, we will install eBuild, which are stored on overlay. So this is the main vocabulary of Gen2 
which is essential to continue uh, this talk. Um, uh, earlier, we, we got uh, a metaphor with a cooking process. So I'm going to do a metaphor too with uh, hiking. I do like uh, hiking and uh, sleep in the forest and stuff like that. But uh, something you do when you start hiking, walking in the forest, uh, at first is that you want to take everything in your bag. You just want to have a big bag full of what I call just in case. So let's take uh, three t-shirts, like, let's take uh, three underwear, uh, uh, three liters of bottle uh, of water, sorry. Uh, anything just in case. And when you'll be uh, in the mountain, in the forest, you will just only do half of what, what you bring with you uh, on the field. So contributing to flat car is like hiking. You need to ask yourself, if I want to add this package to the US, is it something just in case? Or is it something I really need and the community really need to run this software uh, on container workloads in a cluster? So this is something always to keep in mind. And we can even go further. So if by, uh, when you hike, you have a big bag full of justice case, it will be dangerous because you have like 10 kilograms on your back or 20 kilograms on your back. And when you work, it can be, you can feel insecure uh, on your legs because you have a, a bag full of, full of just in case. So this is the same thing with flat terror. If you have a distro, uh, cloud, uh, cloud distro uh, full of uh, packages, you will take some time to boot, you will increase the super fast attack. So yeah, it's not, it's not uh, really, uh, really cool. And so yeah, you just ask yourself when you add a package or update a package, if it pulls over dependencies, is this something required to run my OS? And finally, it's the same thing uh, with hiking and with the flat car development. When you, when you do a lot of hiking, you will acquire experience. And with this experience, you will know what you need to bring on the fields. And with Flatcar, it's the same thing. Uh, we provide uh, an OS. It's pretty old now, um, four or five years. It's old in the IT. And, and it's uh, bulletproof because uh, we've been uh, through a lot of scenarios. And we know that the package we currently shipped are useful and are not just in case. And even better, uh, with Flatcar, we ship Docker. So everything you need to run can be run using Docker. So if you need to provide a, a new software or a new software, you can just pull it with Docker and run it through Initium. So that was a quick uh, metaphor. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let's go inside the uh, the technical stuff, uh, let's add a package. So we first need to find a package to add. Uh, first thing you can do if you want to add a package by con to contribute to Flatcar is to go on the GitHub uh, repository and find, find uh, an issue mentioning a package update, a package addition, sorry. So this is the first thing to do. All the second things to do is to open yourself an issue on GitHub saying that, hey, I want to add this package to a flat car. Is it something cool? I think it's, uh, it will be useful for the community and for people having this in uh, their cluster. So yeah, you can just motivate uh, why you would like to uh, add this new package. And it can be a bonus if you're able to estimate the size of this new package uh, to know how, by how much the size of the OS will be increased. So let's take the example of pfetch package. Why pfetch? Because it's a simple bash script. Uh, so it does not require uh, any dependency. It does not require compilation. It's really a simple package to add. And it's always nice to flex uh, in your cluster and to say, hey, my cluster is running on Flatcar Container Linux and to share it on Twitter. Uh, so how can I add the pfetch package? So as I said, with Gen2, everything is an e-build. Every package is an e-build, so a recipe of how to install a software. So first, I need to get an e-build of pfetch. So I can check in the Gen2 Gen2 uh, Git repository. So this is the main repository where every e-build 
are stored, if I recall correctly, there is like uh, two, 200,000 package uh, e-build in this repository. Um, so yeah, it, this is the main, main place. We call it the upstream. So this is basically where most of the flat car package are coming from. Uh, we can decide to use an over overlay to find out uh, this e-build, or we can just manually write the e-build and submit it uh, to, uh, to a flat car overlay. So in our case, I already provide the e-build on another overlay. So it's called the Gen2 Guru overlay. And so this is the e-build. It's only uh, 16 lines of code. So you can see it's really simple. Uh, adding package can be quite complicated. So I would like to, to show you something really simple. So no compilation, no dependency, only a simple batch script. So this script will be pulled from GitHub and installed on the OS. So this is everything you need to know uh, on the on the e-build. Now I'm happy. I have my e-build of pfetch. Uh, what's next? So we have to decide where we are going to store this e-build. As I said, uh, on Gen2, e-build lives inside overlay. With uh, Flatcore Container Linux, we currently use two overlays. CoreOS overlay is uh, the legacy one, not the legacy one. It's a historical one. And this is where we put uh, everything, uh, every e-build with heavy modification, heavy customization. Because sometimes for some package, we have some uh, constraints uh, related to cloud provider, related to container uh, workloads. So we need to patch we need to remove some dependencies or to add dependencies to our uh, e-build. So all these e-builds are stored in the core overlay. And we have the portage table. This is a sync with the upstream. So this is where we store uh, the uh, the e-build without, without modification, actually. So it's just a sync with uh, Gen2, Gen2, or another overlay. Uh, so yeah, this is the two overlays we have. One for heavy customization, and the other one just to put regular e-build inside. In our case, pfetch, I just need to, to install it. There is no flat curl shenanigans, no specific stuff. So I can just put it into protege table. All right. Now this is the fun part. This is where we actually build the OS. So we're going to to take all the packages uh, composing, composing the OS, and we're going to compile them and to generate an image, an actual image I would be able to use on GCE, on AWS, or locally we're using QMU. Uh, so yeah, this is the fun part. Um, so in our case, we are just going to build a QMU image to be able to run a locally uh, stuff and to see if everything works as expected and if pfetch is uh, well added to my um, to my OS. So uh, let's go on the terminal. So you should be able to see my terminal. Okay, so I guess yes. Uh, the first thing to do when you contribute to Flatcar is that we provide uh, SDK. So uh, it's a collection of useful scripts and, and everything required to run a uh, um, Flatcar contribution. So I will just enter inside the, oops, sorry. I will just enter inside the SDK. So once I'm here, I can just go in this repository and this is where I have all the overlay. So if I check, I have the core OS overlay. So this is where we put the EBS with a heavy modification. And I have the portage table. So if I go into portage table, so this is the EBS without many modification, uh, good status, I can see that I added a pfetch directory. So this is just a copy paste of the upstream. Uh, something interesting is that uh, the architecture of an overlay, basically everything is under category. So you can see the category, you have the dev Python, you have the network DNS, network file system. Uh, everything is sorted into category. In our case, pfetch is not uh, something, uh, it's just an app, so it's going to app uh, MISC. Uh, 
uh, if I go into uh, at misc prefetch, I can see that I have my prefetch, uh, the one I shown you uh, on GitHub. So now I should be able to emerge it, so to install it into the AMD64 board. So let's check uh, if I install it. Yeah, he said that he's going to install a new pfetch. So let's install the, the software. So there is no compilation, no dependencies. So it takes a, a few seconds to install it into a system. And yeah, that's it. We installed a pfetch. So now we can generate uh, our new image to play with. Uh, of course, it's uh, quite a long process. It's not that long, but it's long for a meetup to show all the building of the image. It takes around 30 minutes on my computer to run. So I already built uh, an image to test it and to see that everything works as expected. So if I leave the SDK, I go to the source build uh, image. And inside this directory, uh, this one, yeah. Uh, I have a bunch of files, but uh, the one he uh, is interesting is the flatcar production primary image dot image and the the helper script to run uh, the image using Trim. So I'm going to run the image and to see that everything works as expected. So it will boot an instance uh, using QMU, and I will be able to SSH into the instance and to see that uh, my package has been added as expected and it works as expected. So we need to wait a few seconds just to have the image uh, to boot. So it should be all right. Let's SSH into. And OK, uh, I'm logged inside uh, the, the machine. So if we check uh, this file, you can see that we run on a fat car container Linux. So this is basically what you have when you spawn a cluster on AWS, on GC, on Azure, or flat car. This is the kind of node you will have, except that this one is the one you just built yourself, you built manually, and you can uh, play with it. And it runs locally, of course. Uh, let's see if pfetch work. Yes, it works as expected. I can flex now with my friends uh, <laughs> on Twitter to see that my node is actually running on Flatcar Container Linux. But there is something uh, I, I'm, I'm not happy with, is the fact that the ASCII art is a tux. It's, uh, it's not a customized one. Because if we go back to my slide and we go back to this slide, on pfetch, we can see that I have the Gen2 logo. And on this one, I just have Tux. It's normal because pfetch doesn't know Flatcar Container Linux yet. So it does not provide uh, ASCII art of it. So now as a contributor, I want to provide a pfetch with an ASCII art of Flatcar. So this is something quite normal. Uh, let's shut down this machine. Right. Let's go back to my SDK. And if you understood correctly, now we are going to provide some modification to my initial package, prefetch. prefetch. We are going to provide a patch in order to patch uh, this software to bring this ASCII art and to display a nice uh, flat car ASCII art when we uh, boot uh, the machine. So since it requires a modification, I'm going to move uh, from the, this overlay. I'm going to move it into the chorus overlay. Uh, OK. And now I'm going into the chorus overlay. And I have exactly the same thing. The only difference is that I'm going to edit the the, the e build to mention that now we are going to submit some patches in the installation process. So like this, uh, we will be sure that uh, Emerge will load and uh, apply the patches as expected. So I just need to, to give the location of my patches. OK, 
okay. It should be all right. So if you want to see the patches, the patch is here. So I just uh, ask you out. It took me 30 minutes to generate this. <laughs> uh, uh, so let's install it. So same thing as our earlier, we just emerge it using the image command and giving the pfetch uh, software. So for Gen 2, and for flat curl, there is nothing new. We are just going to reinstall. That's why we have an or. We're just going to reinstall. But uh, you can see a, a, a quite a difference. It's that here it's why portage stable and here it's why chorus because we are switching overlay. But we just installed the same package, but we are switch we are switching overlay. So let's uh, emerge it. And if I check in the logs of the installation, I can see that my patch has been applied as expected. So that's it. And now I can rebuild the image. So just for you to see uh, the command it's in the SDK, and we have a build image. So you just need to run this image, this command, and it will run build the QME image, and you'll be able to log into it. Uh, so let's leave uh, the SDK. I already built this image earlier to save us a 30 minute uh, time. So if I go back to my build images, D, okay, this one, and let's just run now uh, my image. I just need to wait a couple of seconds to, to have in booting. Let's SSH. OK, this is key as, as change. Wait. So now I'm inside Flutter uh, Cotton on Linux uh, booted image. And if I run pfetch, and voila, I now have my ask out. I'm super happy. And uh, my package is installed, and it works as expected. So my patch was OK, and the installation process has been OK since I can see that everything works as expected. So this is the kind of test you can do uh, using QMU and DSDK, just run the image and accept that first it boots and second, it works as expected. Uh, so this is the manual way. And now we, uh, we provide a way to programmatically, I don't know if you can say that, but you can using a uh, programming language to test the OS and to be sure that everything works as expected. So it's called Montel. It's a, it's a nice tool developed by the CoreOS team. So, and now it's developed by Fatcar. And we provide a bunch of uh, useful tools in order to create release, but also to test release. And we have a tool called Fola. And this is the tool which uh, takes care of testing everything. And if we test, if we take a look at the test folder, uh, we can see that we have some uh, some folder, and this is where we write the actual test. So it's right using a Go programming language, and you can just define the test and what you want to test. Uh, I do my I did my homework, so there is already a pfetch. So if we take the pfetch script, we can see that it's it will just assert that uh, the path to user being pfetch exists. So that's all. We could push the test further and to check the output of running this command and to see that if it works uh, as it would work. But uh, yeah, let's just keep the thing simple and we will just run this test to, to assert that this path exists. Um, and using this, you can uh, create complex tests uh, suite of tests. So we have tests to, to, to spawn an ETCD, ETCD cluster and create a Kubernetes cluster using this cluster ETCD. 
uh, and we can yeah just create some uh, actual uh, stuff used in production to be sure that we don't break something when we release a new version of Flapcar. And if I want to run the test, just to need to run this simple command, and it will run on QMU, but I can also run this command to run tests on GCE, on Azure, on every cloud provider supported uh, by Flapcar. Uh, so this command will run the actual test we've seen uh, on the flat car image we just built. So, oops. Um, so like this, we can assert uh, in the CI, because obviously this is run into a CI, we can assert that between uh, releases, we don't break something, we don't have regression uh, between uh, the different version of the software we provide, especially when we run an upgrade of a software of if we don't of, of if we remove uh, some software. So we can see that the test uh, was a success. Uh, we were able to find that there is a path to user being pfetch. So yeah, that's it for the programming stuff. If we go back to the slide, so there is a, this. Uh, to wrap everything up and to see how what's the workflow to add update uh, some package. So we first provide any build. If if we update the package, we just update the build. Then we build everything using the SDK. We build the image and we test. Test can be manually or using Cola, as I as I mentioned, to uh, run uh, uh, programmatically. So, of course, it can be a, a nice way to start contributing to Flatcar. It's to write tests because there are a bunch of software which are not yet tested. So it can be a nice, uh, if you know how to program in Go, it can be a nice uh, getting started uh, to understand how does it work. And of course, you will iterate over it uh, first if the tests are failing. So if the sweet test or just the QMU test doesn't work, you will go back to, the, to providing the build and to see what you need to change in order to have something working. And secondly, if uh, you have some over dependencies, because a pfetch was a really a trivial example, uh, let's suppose you want to install something more complicated or just want to update something like Docker, it will pull a lot of dependencies. So you will have to update all the dependencies and to iterate through uh, this workflow. Finally, when everything is done, uh, you can submit a peer and it will be reviewed by the community and by the core team of uh, Flatcar. Of course, in each step of uh, this workflow, it's always nice to communicate uh, on the issue or in, on the matrix uh, channel to share uh, a date, to share uh, something uh, where you are blocking on uh, because it's, you don't work alone. It's a community work. Uh, everyone can uh, contribute and contribute as well. So, if you want to go deeper in the contributing process, you have these resources, so Kinvolk slash Flatcar. Uh, so as I said, it's the main entry point. Everything you need to know is in this repository. We also have our documentation uh, and the developer guides, uh, which are some nice common tips and tricks. Uh, everything I've shown you uh, to build package, to build image, it's uh, referenced in this guide. And it's pretty uh, pretty easy to follow it uh, and to to try uh, something. And finally, yeah, Flatcar and Freenode. We should change uh, from Freenode in the next uh, days. We keep you uh, updated on this. Also, something is not in the slide, but we started uh, last month uh, to organize a community call. So it's, uh, it's uh, once uh, a month, and you'll be uh, invited to the next one. It will be uh, in June, in the second week of June, if I recall correctly. But you will uh, know everything uh, in due time. So yeah, that's it. If you have uh, any question, uh, feel free to ask me. And uh, you can, of course, ping uh, on Twitter or just send an email. And I'll be happy to answer you. And thanks for your attention.